righty then, we are back with episode 35 of the Midnight Release Podcast. We are bringing it back today in the studio, the guest from episode one of the podcast. You love McTana, back in the studio, back from vacation. Welcome in, man. Feels great to, it feels great to like be back on yeah. a podcast, talking into my mic, sitting here, probably talking about games, life, et cetera. This this feels good. This, this is something I was looking forward to all day. You sound I good. took the day. I I feel great, man. And we'll kind of hop into that a little bit about like kind of where I've been mentally and uh, how the break just felt so key to everything, man. But first off, dude, I'm just happy to be here, man. Back on the pod with Ghost. And I totally forgot that I was the first one on here. And it's just it, it feels good to like bring so, back uh... that friend, that friendship, man. It's like we're just we're going back to back platinum hits here you know yeah. before we before we jump in uh let everyone else know or let everyone know where they can find you your socials what platforms you want them to go look at and then any special projects you might be working on yeah yeah of course so um as of right now y'all i just kind of been being a dad um you know enjoying the nice weather here in ohio even though y'all call it kate uh like Kalid weather or Elden Ring weather um, or Elden Ring place, <laughs> Fallout place, whatever y'all got to say. I heard them all, man. Elden I'm tired Ring of hearing it. Insane. So, like, um, I've just been enjoying the weather, man, going outside, um, all that stuff. But um, if you do end up wanting to look up stuff that I've been doing, um, you can find me on YouTube at You Love Nick Tana, also on Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, all that stuff. Uh, I basically talk about games, game reviews, stuff that I'm enjoying and my opinions on video games in general. Uh, so if you like that stuff, make sure you check it out, man. For sure. For sure. Well, cool, man. Uh, that's all I had. So tell me about this vacation yeah. you took. All right. Yeah, dude. So um, for those who didn't know, I didn't really talk that much about it, but um, I uh, just came back from a four or five day vacation. We went to the Outer Banks. Uh, probably one of the funner vacations that I've had in my entire life. Um, Is that so like the Ozarks? At- Ozarks. I've never even heard of that show. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to slide by that. <laughs> That's a real place, gonna, man. It's a real I'm, place. I'm just going to act like I don't... Uh, we we never talked about that at all. But um, uh, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, it was, uh, it was great, man. Weather was great. We're talking like 80 degree weather. Um, Beach very weather. nice place to go. Yeah, dude, it was very nice. Um, I had a great time, but I did kind of mess up day one because uh, I was getting a little cocky out there, man. Get a little cocky talking to my wife and uh, she was putting on her uh, sunscreen and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I'll use it. But like, I don't really get sunburned. I don't really get red. Um, and then it just so happens day one to a crisp red Red as like Larry the Lobster, my son was calling me. So uh, kind of, kind of put a little damper on the vacation. Mm-hmm. I, I want to say like a damper, but I was, I was burnt, man. And I went from shirtless on the beach day one, day two in a uh, tank top, you know, showing a little bit of skin, a modest bit of skin, to day three UV shirt, sunscreen. <laughs> at like get the get the sun away from me i felt like i i enjoyed <laughs> it's a UV it is it just a long as a, shirt <laughs> yeah so it, a, a uv shirt is kind of like the uh the under armor like like little silky material type thing it's really breathable but uh it's supposed to cover your skin from the uh the uv rays and all that stuff and it also has like an spf of 50 so you're basically just covering up your skin right uh just so you don't get burnt so it was like day three i'm like man i'm wearing this i really don't want to mess with the sun uh the sun me and the sun went a few rounds and the sun had some hands man i uh i uh, will never underestimate sun again i will uh make sure i put on sunscreen and um just just yeah i'm like i'm literally like my skin is just peeling off like i'm just it it, i'm no better than my dog like shedding all (laughs) over the place it's uh it's a pretty nasty business if you guys can get that image in your head. You got to be it's careful not. now. You got to be careful now. Getting a little bit older. I know, older. man. Like, it, it felt back. weird, too. I've never had, like, a stomach sunburn, which was <laughs> weird. Like, I was, so it was, like, my chest and my stomach. And I was like, oh, man. I was like, that just, that just feels weird. It, it looked... I looked at myself and I was like, oh man, taking a shower sucked. <laughs> oh my God, guys, you're just so like, you just feel like the burn on you and you're just trying to scrub. And I was like, oh man, I, 
it's 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 a lot it's a lot but dude other than that dude the vacation was so fun um some key places that i went to man uh shout out to uh ducks donuts it's like a uh it was about three miles away from the place we were staying at and uh basically their little mascots like a duck a little duck and some swimwear and i just thought it was like super cute but it had really great donuts i tried a maple donut for the first time and what? that was a maple bar not, not like a maple bacon donut. It was a maple bacon donut. Uh, okay. And I've never had like a bacon on a donut. Because usually like I'm not. See, a little bit about me all like I'm not really the type of person to go out and get like special donuts. Like if it's I'm, I'm such a simple person. Like I like McDonald's breakfast. Like when everybody talks about like a different breakfast, like a Wendy's Burger King, like cut that shit out. No, listen, I'm not here, really, here's the deal. I'm, gonna I'm not really it. trying to hear. OK, OK. McDonald's breakfast is elite. That is not there is no. There shouldn't be a comparison. Yeah, it's a top, I agree. It's a top three fast food breakfast period and a story like that's. But like when people try to like take down the king, it gets annoying, right? Because it's like, <laughs> dude, I love McDonald's, bro. They they built it. They built this shit from the ground up, bro. I'll get really enthusiastic about my McDonald's breakfast. So when you bring in Wendy's. Burger King. Garbage, garbage. Like, I bet, I bet their breakfast is okay, bro. But like, no, come on, man, no, just go get no, yourself, no. get yourself a sausage McMuffin and a hash brown, and get up out of there and get started with your day. It's exactly I'm not the same the every single time. I'm cool. Yeah, I'm cool, it's bro. Like, it's it's so when it comes to like, I kind of incorporate that with a lot with my life. So like, if uh, like Myers, or like uh, where would uh. Do you have like a food line? What's your grocery store? If you don't mind me asking. Um, the big chain here is Publix. It's a regional thing, okay. but like, it's cheaper to go to a a, a Lidl or an Aldi. Or oh, okay, yeah, we have yeah. all these too. Yeah. But so you know that uh, your Publix they have like donuts and stuff too, like their bakery. Yeah, I will bakery. go get yep. those donuts and get a custard or a <laughs> jelly filled and get on with my day. So seeing these donuts. It was like a new world to me because we have stuff like Krispy Kreme, but like right. I've Jim. had it one time. Yeah. But I mean, so we Willie got a like death by chocolate ass um, donut. It was like chocolate, chocolate glaze, chocolate sprinkles. Uh, I think Mo had a coconut one, if I'm not mistaken. And then I had two maple bacon donuts and they were like really good, bro. Shout out to them. Like customer service was cool. But like the cool thing about them is it's like they have duck stuff. So if you, anybody is familiar or like, obviously you're familiar, like uh, with Jeeps and stuff like that, their main thing is like having ducks or being ducked. So um, a lot of people, like the Jeeps were made here in Ohio. So a lot of people with Jeeps, they have like, they have, proud of the jeep and then they have like ducks and stuff on the windshield uh but they also ha- like that duck donuts place is like aware of that so they had like their own spin-off like sprinkled duck that you could buy there and like a bunch of merch and stuff like that what's the um, deal with the ducks in the windshield coco has that okay so um it's mainly with like the wranglers so yeah, my has. my Mo has the uh, the Jeep Wrangler, and um, it's just kind of a thing that I forgot who the person was started it. Uh, but it was kind of a thing. You see a Jeep Wrangler, uh, you give them a duck. Um, if you like their Jeep, and then they just display them on the windshield, and those ducks display like people who really enjoyed your Jeep. Uh, when people yeah. have like the Jeep Wranglers, they like to like you, you. The thing is with the Wranglers, it's so much different than like other SUVs and stuff like, cause you could put so much customization options to it and like really modify it to the way you want. People really like to rough and tough these things up. Like you could get a base Wrangler, but you could also easily add in a different grill or people like to add, uh, they make the name their Jeeps and then they'll put names on the side of them. And then you could take the doors off of them and put on different tops. Uh, so there's so much different ways you could like show your personality with, the Jeeps in general. Uh, but they also have like events and stuff like that. Like me and Mo went to a Jeep event uh, not too long ago where everybody with a Wrangler basically met up at the sp- uh, the Speedway track. Everybody parked their Jeep Wranglers next to each other and you just socialize and you have sponsors there that will do raffles and you could uh, talk about other people's Jeeps. It's, it's kind of like a cult 
Uh, but it's also very cool to see people really like get involved um, with it. So yeah, I never knew what the ducks are for because every single one has some kind of figurine. He has some Pokemon up in there too, which makes sense. Yeah. So Morgan's Jeep, hers is like red, so she'll get like a bunch of red accessories and stuff like that. And then she has like the angry grill where it makes the headlights look like they're kind of like angry eyed and stuff like that. And the hollow or um, I forgot what they're called. I think they're like hollow or halo lights, halo lights. I'm sorry. Um, and it, 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 it really is cool. Like honestly, driving her Jeep is, uh, is very fun and I can see the appeal with it. But, um, usually when you go to events like that, people will have like buckets of ducks. They'll buy their own type of ducks. And it's like, oh, I really like this Jeep. Here's a duck. And then they'll be like, oh, okay. And then they'll put it in their windshield. And then it just show like, they just have them all lined up across their windshield. Morgan's gotten a decent amount so far. Just decent amount. Strangers. Yeah, people will just That's go cool. up. They'll, That's they'll put cool. like a yeah, they'll put a duck on your uh, on your door. Like sometimes, like because I don't know what like who makes these type of ducks, but like I've seen so many different kinds. I've seen um, an Irish duck. I've seen um, ducks that look like dragons. I've seen red ducks. I've seen ducks that look like ninja turtles. I've seen the sprinkle ducks that we were talking about. There's so there's so many different varieties of it. So like you could really like give people different ducks to where they're like, Oh, that's a cool duck. I want to add that to my collection. And then you're just lined up with a bunch of different ducks. And you're like, Oh, I remember I got this one when I went on this trail or when I went to a meetup with these people, I, someone gave me that. It's like more of like a memory thing. Um, and then, but when we went to that Jeep thing, the cool thing about it was everybody got to race around the racetrack. So <laughs> the, you, uh, they put you into certain groups and then everybody's racing around this track. And it was <sighs> insane. It was insane. I was blown away of uh, the fun that we, uh, that we had with that. And then we took it to the drive-ins and watched uh, inside. Oh, what was it? Inside out Two. inside out Two. Sorry. The I always get confused. With the yes. That's love the drive. Cool. Wait, how do they, how do they do the sound for that? So you have to dial it with the radio. So ours would be like, I think it was like 93.3. And uh, okay, that's cool. Her friend ended up bringing a special radio that like um, had AM and FM. So we could just shut the car off and then park. And then we could just sit in the Jeep or we pulled up our chairs. And then she had the radio at our feet. and We could listen to it. Uh, my one complaint with the drive-ins that day, I never experienced it like that, but we need to talk about foods you can eat at the movies and foods mm -hmm. you cannot mm -hmm. eat at the movies, bro. There is, there's a line, and I think discussing this has to be a thing because, okay, first of all, if any cops are listening to this, man, y'all could skip to the part where I'm not talking about this, but we we all know... We were raised to sneak in food to the drive-ins, right? That's just not, we, we like to use the concession stands there, but it's like sneak in some food if you want some extravagant ass meal. Don't make me wait in the line for 30 minutes to miss my movie because you wanted to order a full pizza and chicken tenders with nacho fries. Like that's not the like, that's not a, a, a food I feel like you should be eating at the movies, bro. <laughs> your popcorn and let's get the let's get up out of there like let's what let me i want to see what happens with riley like i'm i was really upset with the way that that went because i'm sitting here and i'm i'm like i'm sitting in this line for like 30 minutes and i'm like seeing everybody they're grabbing corn dogs slut slu i feel like an icy shout out to my boy judge dreads bro i know he's slushy gang we went to the movies one time and he got a slushy he put me on the icy that 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 is something Dude, you can get at the movies. I'll wait for you to get an icy. That because whatever you know, icy popcorn. But like, come on, man, this ain't the Cubs versus the Astros, bro. Put down the damn nachos, get a popcorn, and let's get the line moving. Very very <laughs> upset with how that line was moving, man. Very. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Any any kind of fresh. Like, are you dropping fresh fries at the movie theater? That seems a little bit much. You know, are you, yeah, are, you like, are you popping the pizza in for 20 minutes at the movie theater? Like, are you, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's, I get what you're saying. I get what it should I be. It should be like finger foods and like, 
heat it up, have it on a roller, do whatever. It's it should be kind of like an it, it's supposed to be a convenience thing. Yeah, you're supposed to like get a little something. You're not supposed to unless it's like a movie theater made to dine at, which those exist. Where you sit down, you put in your order, you know, you grab a beer or whatever, and they bring you out a full meal. Which are, I mean, it's cool, that's fine, but I get it. A drive, a drive-in is supposed to be a little more classic, you know. Okay, so I guess I'm not so much complaining. I I love that the drive-in does give you those options, and that's uh that's cool and all. Like it's just the fact that like as a consumer, man, I'm just kind of annoyed that it's like, bro. Hey, if you wanted a pizza, bro, just go to Little C's and just hide that hide that shit in the trunk. Like, let's let's be real cars? here. You know? Do they check cars? Oh my god, what are they gonna tell me? Do, what are they gonna do? No, I'm what not saying they, like, do they check cars when you drive in to the movie theater? They, to a drive-in theater? They've they've never checked my car. I've seen workers like look at me, but like that, I would just kind of like play it off. Because we watched the Ninja Turtle movie, and I will I will firstly say. I definitely dropped the ball on this one. A hundred percent dropped the ball on this one. Went to go see the uh, the Ninja Turtle movie, um, and I brought in Taco Bell. Really dropped the ball to bring in a pizza there. Really dropped the ball, but I did bring in Taco Bell and I did eat that, watch the movie, and it was good. Uh, but I never got in trouble for it. But I'm not gonna go to the movie theaters and be like, "Yo, chef me up some." <laughs> <laughs> like chef me up a full pizza, you know, that like fried that's... ravioli and uh, you know some hoagies to go. You're like what? And you should have saw my face and how amazed I was because I'm waiting for everybody to get their thing called, check your receipt. Did you order the pizza? No, I ordered the pizza. Well, we both ordered a pizza. It's more the fact that it's like I walked in. I was like, yo, let me get a jumbo popcorn and a small popcorn. And. And they just gave me my popcorn. And I walked out like nobody was waiting on me and everything. It's like, all right, let's move. Let's move. Let's move. I respect it. I respect it. But it ah. is it is. A hundred times easier to just bring your own. Bring your own snack like those. The workers there don't care. Like no one's going to check you and be like shit about the popcorn at the concession stand. No one cares. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares. Yeah. I um I brought in food plenty of times. So, I mean I brought I mean, in food like to sit down theaters normally. We went beforehand to Kroger's after the uh after the Jeep event and we were like, all right, Willie, like what are some things you want? Like obviously we'll get popcorn there. Like movie theater popcorn is almost on the same tier as sex. Like it's just that good, bro. Like well. it's a movie th- like movie theater popcorn is so good, bro. Like I I I really don't understand like what they do to that popcorn. It is it is amazing. So, um, I, I like we'll get a popcorn there, but it's like, hey, bro, I'm not paying ten bucks for some M and M's, dude. Like, let me go get a fun dude, size M and M's and let's let's pack it up, sneak it in, uh, dude. Like when when me and my cousins would go to the drive-ins when we were younger, it was like, hey, we were sneaking four in the hatch, put a blanket over them, and it's like, <laughs> shut up. I'm serious. Yes, we sneak it in bodies to the drive-in, dude. We all try to see a movie. Tickets were like five, six bucks. Yeah, get get up in here. No, but I brought Jim and Nance. They're in the back. What? <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. We were sneaking oh people God. in, dude. We- many, many moons I- ago, I went to a, I went, I went on a, uh, on a first date, a long time ago, and okay. showed up, and I was like, oh, should we get anything from the snack bar? She's like, I got it. I said, what? She said, no, 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 we're good. I said. Okay, uh, we went in the movie, sat down. She opens her purse, pulls out two ten-piece nugs, two large fries, and two tall boys of Miller Lite. <laughs> it's like we're good. I'm like, I'm so impressed with you right That's now. This is incredible. Fire date. Fire date. Fire date. It was a tall like boys of Miller Lite for me. I was like, hey, I got yeah. these nuggets. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then she pulled out this giant can of beer. And I'm like, all right, this is way cooler. This is way mm-hmm. cooler. It makes the movie so much. It makes it's the movie funner, so much for better. Sure. So much better. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree, dude. I I definitely want to make sure I go to more drive-in movies. I do have a movie theater where uh, we have they have like rec- reclining seats and they have the heated seats, which are nice. Like that. Which are nice. Know. Which are nice. Very nice. Very nice. I will drive the twenty-five minutes to go to that movie theater versus the one that's closest to my mall. Just because the experience is so much better. Um, but just going to see the drive-in, man. Sitting outside, hoodie on, 
Uh, you get to watch two movies for the price of one, two. Like we, they're we watched back, the Mar- they're back to back. Yeah, we watched the Mario movie and the Puss in Boots movie, two brand new movies like back to back. And yeah, they start a little late because you got to wait for it to be dark and everything else. But right. I mean, you can't beat that two movies. It's, it's kind of tough for the little one to stay up though because he's True. really really tired that late. That wait, that new Puss in Boots movie, the uh, the one where he cheats, he's like cheating death. Yes, yes, he Dude, is. How good was that movie? Very good. I I, I, was, I, I enjoyed it. Thoroughly impressed. I was like, yeah, yeah, another anime movie. Yeah, it's something to put on. And halfway through, I was like, Dad, okay, this is like, this is a good movie. This is a solid I, movie. I said the same thing because it came on, and we're like, all right, man, like we'll sit here and watch it. But like, my expectations were very low. Yes, exactly. Just because yes. it was more of a spinoff movie, it's not the main movie. It's not like because he came from Shrek. So yeah. you're like, okay, how good could the right. side movie? Yeah, exactly, dude. Same, same and mindset. I like the side characters. I la- I laughed at a lot of the points of it. And I was like, this is dude, The very... animation was incredible. How it was oh, like yeah. fading in and out of 2D and 3D all at the same time. It's like, mm-hmm. it reminded me of uh, Miles Morales a little bit. Like those yes. styles. Yeah. The, the villain was actually kind of a villain. Like, I would say, like, even though it was a kid's movie, the villain was very villain like i don't know how to explain it he was very dark and sometimes you're like the villain could pull this off like even as like a kid movie it's kind of like because you know you watch like mario you're like all right mario is gonna mario's gonna kick some ass like we know that um oh oh here's a star we know what's gonna happen with puss in boots and the villain we were just kind of like you don't know what to expect uh so i kind of i kind of like that for the movie it was a very good movie and like i like the dog because the dog was very cute very funny as well so when the villain is good the movie is good uh-huh. if the villain sucks the movie is bad it doesn't matter how good the heroes are if the villain sucks because you never you're like oh they're never in danger like, yeah that's the thing is like if you're not if you don't have a, a sense of fear then right. like is the movie really exciting i guess i would say no, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, that was um I I think Dreamworks I think Dreamworks made that one. They can they're not Pixar, so they can kinda they can get away with a little bit more as far okay. as like um like violence or like I think they cuss in that one too. So they can yeah, they, they can do. get away with a little bit more. <clears throat> as like as an animated movie does, but yeah, I was I was I was kinda shocked watching it. I was like this I just I couldn't believe like man i I, i'm enjoying this way more than i thought i was gonna enjoy this oh yeah and it it was very good it was very good i agree have you been playing the new elden ring to pivot a little bit oh man no i wish i could bro um so i i will say if i have to go into the video game hall of fame right now and have elden ring on my list would it be top five possibly and I really did enjoy the original game. I put in 85 hours. Um, I felt like my playthrough could have been a little bit better. Me doing my first time with a Soulsborne game, I felt like I did okay. Um, but I felt like I really didn't play the way I wanted to. Uh, but to kind of pivot to your question, I have not played the new DLC. And there's a few reasons why. So the reasons I haven't really been playing the DLC is if you guys don't know... Uh, in order to play the DLC, you have to be a certain boss in the game, which is Moog. And in order to beat that boss or to acquire that boss, you have to do a side quest to end up facing that boss at the end of the side quest. And for one, I didn't end up doing that. I ended up beating the game without having to do that side quest. Um, So I, I beat the game, and then I wanted to start a new game plus. Because I wanted to start a new game plus in order to prep myself for the best way possible for the DLC, if that makes sense. Because when I beat Elden Ring, that was year 2022. Um, In my off time, yeah, for my year of not playing that, I was playing that game and streaming that constantly. That was like my streaming, I would say a, a big chunk of my streaming career for 2022 was that game. It was streaming that game, making funny gameplay videos out of it, 
and stream the game more, stream the game more, and then try to play it as much as possible on stream so people could like keep track with everything. Um, but I started a new game plus, so I'm at the very beginning of the game, and I played it for like five hours, died a few times, and then I kind of just stopped playing. Um, but I, 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 I have watched it. I have watched uh, Kai Sinat play it. Um, I've been watching some of my favorite people play it. One Toe Jack. I watch him play it a little bit. And uh, it looks great. And I think From Soft just keeps on uh, blowing everybody out of the water with how great they make games. The DLC is on par to be like a 10 out of 10. Um, I think they constantly put out hits and do a very good job with their DLCs in their game. So um, shout out to them, but it looks very great. And I, I wish I could play it, man. I just have to live through somebody else's, uh, somebody else's. So, uh, streams so you're right not going to go back in and, and like run it back to, to do that. Oh, I will. I will. It's, I just don't. It's a time commitment. It's a, it's a big commitment. And if I were to do it, I'm, I would just kind of try and speed run it. But like, speed running elden ring i know people like lolk stew you're very familiar with that bomb i hey, know he, he was did, just uh, he was just in the studio i know he i heard in. i heard i gotta tune into what he was saying bro. he probably you probably asked him the same shit. thing huh? yeah. yeah i get you yeah well yeah uh, he said he's playing it and i said um that's crazy because like he's so bad at halo you know so it's like uh dude yeah. the worst it's like why would worst. you qu- why would you quit before you got better you know you got to watch him play eights, bro. He's the worst. <laughs> He's the worst at eights. Um, but nah, man, I um, I talked to him a little bit because I called him on the phone. I didn't really talked to him forever. I was like, hey, man, I was like, what do you think? This would be a good idea. He's like, I think you definitely should start a new game plus um, just for the experience of playing the game again. Um, I'm playing it a little bit different. I'm still very rusty when it comes to these fights. Uh, but it was definitely worth uh, to do the new game plus, even though I knew it was going to be uh, forever away from me to uh, beat the new boss and do the DLC. I know I will get to it eventually. Um, and I think one day I'll sit down and really try and get into it again. As of right now, dude, I'm just with the video games, man. I just been I playing Persona 4 still. Um, I was playing fallout for when that fallout hype was going on and I, then i also, almost succumbed to that i almost bought bought one of them and then i just i tried to hold strong i watched the show and i was like man eh, am i just buy this because i'm hyped right now or should i just uh, chill on this hear me out and i i'm very i don't know what the word is bro it's not hipster it's uh it's somebody who doesn't believe into the hype bro like i i hate hype shit like what does that what does that mean? I'm uh I don't know what the word means. It's like I I try to avoid hype against the grain would be kind of yeah. it's it, there's a word for it, um, but I was like I'm like man I was like oh here we go Fallout's just gonna get a lot of play and everybody's gonna talk about Fallout just because of the show and show's incredible by the way. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it <laughs> and I I Good really enjoyed it. It 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 was amazing. I I loved every aspect of it. It's I was watching the show and I enjoyed it so much. And I think it was episode one or episode two. Um, I really, I don't know if it'd be spoilers, just like the big, the big first glimpse of like, this is what this show is like the big, the big bang, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, and just really getting into it. And it was, it was awesome. It was, it was amazing. I loved it. And I was like, you know what? I'm looking at this. I'm really enjoying the show. I'm looking and I'm, and then I saw that they posted, hey, we have next gen available for Fallout 4. And I'm like, this would be a great time to play one of the better Fallout games with better gameplay and better updated graphics. So let's give it a shot. And I played about 15 hours of it. Not may not be a lot to some people, but I played 15 hours of it and I enjoyed it as well. I'm just very bad at those type of games. Um, some I just can't get around the concept of not having to find and loot for my ammo. It feels weird to me because like I'm watching Morgan play and she's like she always has like a million ammo and a million guns and I'm like sitting here and I'm like I I explored like ten different houses and didn't find anything 
And he's like, yeah. She's like, technically, you don't have to explore that house, like, unless you have a quest for it. And I'm like, well, what's the, like, it's not giving me credit for explore exploring this house, though. Like, you might get a main weapon or you might get, like, a special weapon. But sometimes you could just loot a whole house and it have not shit. Nothing, yeah. Nothing. And it's like, I just ran out of ammo and everything. Um, But I, I still love it. Um, I thought the uh, the dialogue was great. Uh, the option to get certain side characters, uh, companions, I guess you would call them, is very good. Um, and I liked it. it. Which is very strange to me because I was a person who didn't like Starfield. So seeing Fallout, I was like, already at first hand, I was like, kind of like, uh, will I like this? Will I enjoy this? Um, and I did for what it was. And I might go back to it, honestly. And I really thought the, uh, the fallout phase on TikTok was very cool. Watching people talk about, uh, or just like watching people play the replay fallout with the mods and everything. It's, um, it was cool to watch. It was just crazy how, I mean, they're putting the show out and the devs and the, and the company itself, they're just going, Hey, if this hits, we're about to, we're about to resell this older game. It's just, it's just like interesting to watch these ebbs and flows because you know, a lot of people bought it. They played through 20 hours or less, let's call it. And then they're never going to pick it up again. And they just right. bought it because of how good the show is. And I don't want to hear any, hey, there's, I'm sure there's some fallout purists or like, blah. you know, the show was really solid for, for, for a video game adaptation, which just doesn't happen very often. You know, I put Last of Us up there. If you haven't watched that yet, I, I uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend it. Um, that was a really solid one. Fallout is probably up there for me as well. Probably like a top five at this point. But there's so many failures, so I'm, I'm like very nervous for Borderlands movie. I, I just the casting is throwing me off. I don't know why Kevin Hart's in it. it makes no sense to me. Um, I don't. I can't, were the Assassin's Creed movies bad? Can't remember. It was Michael Fassbender. They're a little bit older. I don't think they did very well. I don't know, man. It's I'm just concerned. There's, there's I, so many more misses than hits. It feels. I never watched the Assassin's Creed movie. I thought it looked okay, but I never was an Assassin's Creed fan. Okay. I played Assassin's Creed one um, a little bit. Played Black Flag a little bit. Um. But it was like it was cool. It was all right. Um, but I never played like all the Assassin's Creed to be like, yo, I want to see the movie. Right. Um, and I feel like a lot of those movies are for those fan bases. And the reason that sometimes you could get turned off by said so movie is kind of like how you said you have an envision in your head about how the Borderlands movie should be. Now, in my same head. Um, I said the same thing about Mario. We talked about Mario on Gaming Gone Weird, and we were saying, A, what are we doing? We're talking about these actors. We're talking about Jack Black as Bowser. We're talking about this guy as Toad. We're talking about, uh, what was his name? Charlie, or what? who was the main guy as Mario? I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank Chris right Pratt. now. Yeah, Chris Pratt. We're kind of sitting here. We're like, does he fit Mario? But they ended up making it work because it was an animated movie. But Kevin Hart could make the movie good. He might play a role into it to where it might be good. I think just to keep your options like or your expectations a little bit open. Um, I I I do agree that like you can miss and flop heavy when it comes to video game shows when they get turned into movies. It but that's just the fun in it. Um, I, I, I don't think they should always, it should always be the case. I have movies in my head that I, or video games in my head that I feel like that could be movies. Some off the top of my head, like I feel like God of War would make a really good movie series. Oh man, that would be it held would, to the highest standard, dude. God uh -huh. of War fans. Yeah. But you know, like Gears if you, could, maybe? If you could keep good. it dark, if you could keep it dark, you have to uh, with the same amount of energy. Gears of War would be fantastic. Gears of War would be sick. Even though the games really, I mean, Gears of War, I like Gears of War 2, I like Gears of War 3, um, I didn't really play the ones after that, but we all love Marcus and Dom, we all love Coltrane, we all love the Carmines, um, they're very good characters, so putting them in a movie 
and having them fit that theme would just be great in general. Um, I, I, I love, I love gears. I do love gears. I yeah, think, I, I think that's too. a man. I mean, it's a no brainer. And now they're coming over with another. It, it, there's just there's so much lore to it. Characters are awesome. As long as they keep it true to the, I mean, they have to make it violent, man. And I just. This is where my concern is like Borderlands is a violent game. I know it's a little cartoony and silly, but people explode regularly into pieces. You know, it's there's it doesn't pull punches on on the animated violence and the silliness of it. Uh, I just. There's like. I don't know, and I want to keep an open mind, man, but like there's like a certain thing that Kevin Hart brings. It just it makes me feel like it's oh, it's okay. Well, now it's time for mass appeal. So we can't go too hard because Kevin Hart's in it. We want everyone to be able to see it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that's when it loses me. It's I don't know. And then if you look at the character he's supposed to be playing, it's like, dude, that's not he's not like a comedic guy. The character's not. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I wasn't aware of like who he was gonna be playing or the type of role. How, did you play the first uh, one? So the first Borderlands? <laughs> Y'all are gonna hate me, man. Cause I I I I, I try to I try to make myself as acknowledgeable as possible when I do with games, but there are just so many games I have not reached. And the Borderlands period was not... I didn't play Borderlands 1. I didn't play Borderlands 2 or 3. The only type of Borderlands game I played was the Tiny Tina's game, and that was with you. Uh, But I I really liked the way that Tiny Tina's play, and I was going to get into that after we talked about the Borderlands thing, because... I think it was it uh, it was more of just like being able to create certain classes and subclasses that made that game very fun. Yeah. Um I don't know if it's kind of like that in Borderlands. I know you have certain weapons in the game. Uh but that one felt a lot more RPG-ish to me to where I was like I they, like this. They're still RPG-ish and like you pick one of the four starting characters. They have talent trees that you can spec into. Um, so it's similar in that way, but it's less, it's less like tiny Tina's was more RPG focused. Mm -hmm. Borderlands was more like looter shooter focused. I would say not that tiny Tina's isn't, but it was less of a theme of that. So, right. And nothing turns me on more than like a, uh, like a dungeons and dragons type feeling like for how much I really love those settings. I I wish I would just like sit down like every two or like every other week and play like a Dungeons and Dragons type like setting. Cause I, I love like, like the game based itself off of like dragons and like mythical creatures and fantasy. Yeah. Real fantasy. Um, you, you were short for some aspect of the time and you had these crazy. It was, it's the top down. Yeah. The top down map was cool. Mm Uh huh. Yeah, that was a cool game, man. I I feel like it did okay. I, I didn't really see a whole lot of love for it. I, I thought it was awesome. Like the Mushroom Companion. Got a lot of oh good like God. short videos out of that. Uh, it was oh cool. Oh my it, God. It came you out were during cook- COVID. Yeah. You were cooking with that boy. Um yeah, and but like we had fun. such good times. We it was me, you. I think we played with Judge a few times. We played with uh my cousin Zach a little yeah, bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we played with uh, just uh, being able to play a game like that with a bunch of people and it uh, and they all had their different builds and stuff like that. It was cool, man. Uh, they definitely flopped with the DLC. I will say that. Uh, I didn't DLC. even know they had one. Oh no. Yeah, we we played the DLC. Remember, we played. It was it was the shark DLC, and oh, we. Kept... Oh right, right, right. Okay. Remember, we kept on doing it over and over again to maybe get like an exclusive weapon or whatever, and it was like, oh, you could play it again, but it's just harder or like. No, you had to beat them four times. That's what it was. You yeah, had to beat them four yeah, times, yeah, and every yeah. time it got harder. And you're like, dude, I don't want to do the same thing over and over again because you were going through the same map with and then you the rolled same enemies. You like, you like rolled for loot at the end, that spinning wheel thing. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Okay, okay, I remember that. Uh, yeah, that wasn't good clearly because I didn't remember that at all. Mm-mm-mm. Cool that game cool. though. Cool concept. I, I dug the game. I liked all the web. Like it was like automatic crossbows and you got spells as well as guns um the maps i thought the maps and environments were cool a lot of exploration stuff uh, i don't know i like i like the i like the series a lot i'm just it's something i really liked 
and I played all of them and I just wanted to be good and I think I mean it's probably so impossible to get casting oh 100% my. right you know I didn't mean to cut you off but I was very curious about the metacritic score for Tiny's Tina and this is my first time dusting the keyboard off and really getting on metacritic because I haven't been doing my research a lot I got on and on the front page it said Elden Ring got a 95 score on metacritic that is the DLC the DLC which isn't like I'm not like shocked I am just like blown a 95 is insane of a score dude I can't Especially think all of all the complaints for it being too hard Oh no they there's no oh this game is too hard you're not allowed to say that because they the game came out so much farther after the game it's like grind a little like what if you were so over leveled that the dlc wasn't fun the whole point of the game is for it to have a little bit of like yeah. that you want to feel accomplished when you beat a boss you don't want to like one shot boss and be like oh yeah this is fun no the whole aspect of it is if you want to have a little bit of struggle and have a little bit of strategy and feel that excitement when it's like it's done elden ring was the first game i played where i beat it and i like I had tears in my eyes because I was just like, it's finally done. Right, right. Because you spend so much time and you struggle so much at first and you like learn and you like, you get past the, every like, every so often you'd get past the 25 hour mark and you're like, oh, now I know about, I'm getting the hang of this. And you just really start getting the hang of everything and like combinations and weapons and how to do certain things. And you're just like, wow. Uh, when it's all said and done and you beat everything, it's just, it's it's like a relief off your shoulders almost. Um, when I was looking up Tiny Tina's, it had a 78 on Metacritic, which is kind of eh. But it seemed like a lot of people were just kind of like, it's okay, yeah. It's I, Some people either really liked it or they just hated it. It's a niche um, market. It's like it's a spin-off Borderlands game and like you're already so deep into the Borderlands life cycle. And now you're doing like a D and D spinoff, and I yeah, I, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, like people were saying, like the gameplay is fine, uh, but they were just like the whole aspect that they just felt like they could have did so much more. Um, like what? I, they said the gameplay felt well. The mix of fantasy was good. It's just bad optimization. People were saying, which I mean, I think that had to be with EA. Um. It felt like it was really bad, but a lot of people are saying like optimization for sure okay. is what I'm getting. I mean, that's like, a valid complaint. It's, it has nothing to do with the game necessarily, as far as like content itself. But if your like, game the, doesn't run, that I'd be pissed too. <laughs> somebody said, "I don't know what is happening at Gearbox." Uh, Borderlands One and Borderlands Two were great games. Borderlands Three was good mechanically, but the writing just fell apart. And then Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, the writing and the mechanics both fell. Some people are very. I mean, apart? I thought it was. I thought it was fun. Hey, that's just. That's just how you know what I'm saying. That's why opinions are opinions, man. Yeah, opinions are opinions. I, yeah, that's man, true. This, this is just. I'm so upset with myself because now I'm getting on Metacritic and I'm looking at all these games that I just missed. That I was like, oh, dude, I'm looking forward to this game, and I just took a break and just stopped looking up on it so much, and now they're finally out, and I'm like, oh, dude, this game's out. I completely missed it. <laughs> like what? Like what? Um, one of the games was called Blood. Um, I forgot what type of game it was. I just remember seeing the commercial and I just got or like the uh the trailer and I generally just like the uh the art style of it. Um it was by Humble Games, I'm pretty sure. It was like at the Humble Showcase. Why does that sound so familiar? Mm-hmm. Um I'm trying to read It's not Dredge, is it? No. No, Dredge. <laughs> We know Dude, you they like. Have a, they have another DLC. They just released another one. Oh yeah, they're cooking. They're cooking. Humble games. And they're really good DLCs too. Yeah, the Pale uh, Reach, and there was one more. Humble games. What did? What did they make? Humble games. I reviewed one of their games. This is gonna bother me. Damn it. Humble game adventure bundle. Is this? No, I'm trying to look at which one you probably played. Uh, uh, da, da, da. I think I can just Google Humble Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't think of 
I did a. Uh, I watched their showcase, and I liked a lot. Uh, unpacking, dude. Unpacking. It's unpacking. Okay, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Checks out. They did Coral Island, I think. Oh, B L U D, blood. Yes. So I'll definitely be checking that out. Um, it it got a modest score. It got better than one of the uh, Xbox exclusive games. It looks like an Adult yeah. Swim show. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The uh, the art style is uh is very nice. It looks like stri- it... it looks like Dexter's Laboratory that you could just play. That's mm-hmm. crazy. That could be. It cool. kind of reminds me a little bit of the um. Cold of Lamb with the top down. Oh yeah, I sure. a bunch of guys. Yeah, sure. that's kind of what I get from that. There's too many games, man. You know, what's, I was thinking about this. Is that there? There's not enough time in the world to play all the games. Unless you really, if I don't you think really, you can. I really don't think uh, you can. If you, you have to do, literally, get off of work and game and. You have to game per, like for a living. There's, there's Dude, no way. Here's the thing is I love video games and I love gaming and I love talking about reviews and uh, doing the content that I do. Um, I wouldn't do it if I didn't. But I also understand that there just isn't enough time to just sit there and just play video games. You got to have like responsibilities. You got to have you got to go out sometimes. Go get some sun because sitting in and playing video games, I mean. I don't want to sound like that boomer that it's a, a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. It's just like you have to do other things in your life than just sit there and play games all the time. You got to go out and experience certain things and do kind of come back to it and then really appreciate the love for it instead of just like playing a million trillion games over and over again. Right. Yeah, it makes me think about trying to be more selective in in what i'm playing uh-huh. it's like when i was younger i would just i was just like yeah throw it in doesn't matter just play it play it play it now i'm like man yeah. do i really want to play this entire game of civilization the answer is yes but yes. i have to think about it, it is you know? yeah the, the answer is 100 percent yes but i have to think about it and like don't oh. want to spend 800 turns playing this game and the answer is yes 100 can, can we talk about civilization yeah i'd love to <laughs> Where are you at right now? Are you on Civ Six? Oh, man, yeah, way, I'm on. It's on sale for three dollars. If anyone's listening to this, so well worth the cost. I got it as a uh, a code. I think I paid for like fourteen bucks for every DLC and the game. Damn, that's a great deal. Yeah. So I was uh, I was very excited to get into it. So a lot of people in my friend group they uh, they put me onto Civ. They always talk about Civ. Um, they always play matches with each other, and I didn't quite understand what the game was until I first got it. I didn't really know what I was doing, um, but it could it could ruin friendships. Uh, I, I yeah. would like to I would like to sit down and learn a lot more so I could figure out more strategies and stuff like that because I I think it's very intimidating for like a first time player. It's like you are, it's very complicated. Very, uh, because like getting your first settlement is like one of the most important things to the game. And then like, you got to figure out how you want to win the game. You could win the game by having, um, like the most money or the most settlements, or you could also win by having, uh, faith. Uh, I think it's what it's called. Yeah. You can convert everyone to your religion and win. Yeah. You can, it's, a- it's an economic victory. You can have a cultural victory. So you have like, the most wonders and the most art and music you can just be a warlord and conquer everyone it's it's, it's like but the thing it, it, it's crazy how trivial each turn feels but how important each turn actually is you're like yeah i have 800 turns you're like yeah but this person could win on turn 799 and you could win on turn 800 and it's because you you chose to build a granary instead of an aqueduct 300 turns ago that's why you lost and that's why it's super i don't know man it's just it's like that game i play with with when i'm watching a show and i can just sit there and like just mess around but just having the turn base is nice but yeah it's cool was that is that your first ever civ playing civ 6 yeah um it was my first time ever playing a match and it, it ruins friendships uh we were getting into it a little bit and 
I was kind of like, I felt like I was, everybody was a lot better than me. So I already right off the rip felt some type of way. So when everybody was sitting there communicating, talking about trade routes, talking about, Hey, I'm coming in on your land a little North. Uh, just let me get that a little bit. Um, I, I got you with trade routes and, uh, just kind of that talk. I was really didn't understand what was going on. Uh, so, but when I did is I was like, I, I spoke up because these two guys were just sitting there and they were seemed like they were like being allies and friends with each other. And I spoke up and I was like, nah, that's bullshit. <laughs> and they were like, what did you just say? I'm like, nah, I'm like, oh, like you guys are sitting here starting like an alliance or whatever. So what you guys could take down us little guys. I was like, that's fucked up. And he was like, well, he's all like, that's the game. That's and I like, <laughs> yeah. And like, after I said that, they were like, well, now we know how you feel about us. So now we, uh, we can't trust you. So they wouldn't help me out. And I'm like, dude, this is real life politics. I'm yeah. like, it's so messed up. Uh, but learning that was uh, makes what makes the game fun because I want to be able to be the one to be like, Hey man, I got trade routes coming. I was like, I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll slide you some supplies or I'll slide yeah, you a little, a little bit. Livestock. I got a little, I got some horses over here. Uh -huh. you need some cow. Yeah. It's, it's, it feels just like among us, but way more complicated. Just uh, people lying to each other and talking. Yeah. It's, you don't got to bring up among us. You it's don't the worst. Do I think it's one of the best and worst games of our lifetime. Among us. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Like cool concept. I hit at the perfect time and I just uh, the worst it's just the worst I don't know how to explain it I just don't I don't like it it's ever since I played with that party and I went up there to fake my little task or whatever and the guy's like there's no card task on ship two when there's this many players basically he was a you know try hard a sway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I was like, all right, I'm not playing this anymore. I'll see you guys. I just quit right in the middle of the game. I said, you yeah, memorized the tasks based on the number of party members and like the shit. It was, I was like, dude, no, you ruined the, you ruined the game. You ruined the point of the game. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't, I don't like when people do it like that either. Cause it's like, it's supposed to be a fun party game. It's like it's like, game. oh man, he was the imposter. Right. I should have known. And people make it like way more serious. Like, oh my god, I just won a game in Among Us. Yeah, like it, like, like it meant like it meant something. Right. You remember? You remember? Uh, they did this with Fall Guys too. If you went to the top pages of Among Us or whatever, and they'd have a win counter or something like that. Like, oh yeah, it'd be like i wins on Among Us. That's insane. <laughs> Dude. I remember like. Tim the Tat Man was, they were talking about, like, uh, that was on his journey when he was trying to get his first win. He's like, hey, I'm trying to look for some people to play with. And everybody's like, hey, I'm top 10 in North America. Right, I'm like, right. it's a party game. Dude, relax, right, right. But, like, I, okay, so it's a love-hate relationship, though, because if you sit there and say, um, along the lines of, well, you shouldn't take games that serious. Like, then you sound like a, like a, like, you don't like winning, I guess. Uh, you sound but, like a man. You sound like a whiner. Yeah. yeah so, like, I, I understand the competitiveness of it. Like, you should, like, feel like you want to win a game. It's, it's just the fact of, uh, people who take it to a new serious route where they're, like, trying so freaking hard. Like, it's their life. Like, there's levels to it. Right, right. It's the same thing at a board game. If someone's going super hard on Monopoly or Scrabble or, or whatever. You're like, dude, it's just, it's supposed to be fun. Like, we're just playing a game. You're like, nah, man, I, that card task, I knew that was bullshit. You know, two seconds in, you're a liar. You're like, all right, man. Well, it's been Got fun. It. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Uh, Got it, dude. We are, uh, we're at 54 minutes. Okay. And uh, this is a good time to jump into a segment, which we have been doing for the last, I guess, five to six, seven episodes, something like that. But basically, we're going to be playing a game of 20 questions where you're going to guess the game. You have 20 yes or no questions. I will keep count of uh, how many questions you have asked. You can ask anything about any uh, about any game and uh, we'll we'll narrow it down. And you're obviously going to get it because, you know, you're all knowing and uh, it'll be fun. Oh, my See, that's the, you can't do that to me because, like, now you're really testing my knowledge here. But I will give it a, I'll give it a fair shot. You got the knowledge. 
and you you've got the uh, you got the drive so we'll uh you know we'll send it uh, as soon as you're ready all right i will uh am i gonna ask my first question you're good to go i'll keep track all right was this game released on a next gen console for the first time or just is it on that console is it on a next gen console like okay so did it yes can you play it on a next gen console yes you can is it the first of its game uh like if it was a series is, is it the first in a series okay let me rephrase that then it, is it is is it a series? Is the game a series? No. Did this game... release before the 2000s? Before the 2000s? No. Is this game scary? No. In terms of horror, no. If that's what you meant. Yeah. Is this game an exclusive? No. Everyone asked that. Yeah, because it, it people narrows, ask if it it's an exclusive. narrows it down so much. It narrows it down so much. Yeah. Does this game have a movie? No. Oh my god! How many questions am I at? You're six. So it doesn't have a movie. No it's movie. On, it can be on played on next gen consoles. It did not come out before the 2000s. And uh, it's not an exclusive. Have you played this game? Yes. Have I beat this game? Um, <laughs> have you beaten this game? That's okay. <laughs> I'll give you that one back. <laughs> Um, like, like you were supposed to know that for me. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, maybe. <laughs> um, are there monsters in this game? No. It's a good question. Is this game very long? No. It's not very long, no monsters. Um, I feel like you've got some decent info so far. Did it come out after 2020? No. Did it come out after 2010? Yes. Between 2010 and 2020, that would have been... That would have been around the PS4, Xbox One. 11 questions in. We... Was this game on the Wii? No. So it's not a Nintendo game. Um, I just know I'm gonna feel. Is it? I was. We about to guess a game right now. I was. <laughs> I so was crazy. Saying a game. I was. Like, That's I was so feeling. crazy. <laughs> oh, not man. enough info. Dude. Is this game? In, uh, is this game a first-person shooter? 
Yes. Was this game on the PlayStation? Yes. But not an exclusive. Not an exclusive. It's not a series either. No. So it's not a series. FPS on multiple consoles. Did it have multiplayer? Yes. Five questions left. Oh, man. I was just getting to the good part. <laughs> <laughs> man. Um... Was this multiplayer very competitive? When I say very competitive, I'm talking like the MLGs, the game battles. I'll put it this. I'll say yes, there's a pro scene. Yes. So yes, it is highly competitive. Is it a is it an arena BR or not an arena BR? Is it a, is it a is it an arena shooter like kind of like how Call of Duty was? It is not an arena shooter. How many questions do I have? You have you just asked question seventeen, so you have eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and then your guess. So three more in your guess. Did it come out after twenty uh twenty fifteen? Yes. I feel like you're close. Dude, that would have been on the PS4, the Xbox One. It wasn't on it was on PlayStation. It was not on Nintendo, which you already asked. It was not on Nintendo, but so it was on PlayStation Xbox. Not an arena shooter. It was an FPS. Competitive man. multiplayer. Oh man. Came out was... before 2020, after 2015. Was this game cartoony? No. You have one more question and then your guess. No. Uh, do, 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 do. Was. Was the type of shooter it was? I don't want to say it. Okay, did it have a BR? Yes. Oh my gosh. That was your last question. FPS 20. Was it like. No, I don't, I don't want to say something. I was going to say something <laughs> very off the wall. I was going to say, I, I think I still want to say it. I think so I do. Not an exclusive. BR between 2015 and 2020. No monsters, no cartoon. Dude, I was going to say like no, I'm not going to say it cuz I'll get <laughs> memed forever. Oh no. Competitive shooter. competitive shooter it was it was after 2015 after 2015 released after 2015 before 2020 competitive shooter br not exclusive i want you said not cartoony cuz i the first thing i thought of i don't want to say it, it, it you can talk out loud, but you when you just 
you gotta lock in your guess when you say you're gonna guess. So right now, if you I'm thinking BR, loud. if I'm thinking BR, I'm thinking like PUBG. I'm thinking Apex. Thinking, I'm honestly, thinking Hunt. Fuck it, man. For Stu, man, I'm gonna say Hunt. It's Hunt Showdown. It's PUBG. <sighs> You said it too. I I feel like you're right there. That's so crazy. I never played a game of PUBG, but like, I thought PUBG would be cart. I don't know. I I guess I got when I think of like cartoony. I was like, it's. I think Apex is more cartoony than PUBG because it's a little more like stylized. And I was thinking as cartoony. I was thinking like Fortnite. I'm like Fortnite is cartoony. Okay. Yeah. But I was like, hey, I was close. I was close. Uh, but it's dude, it's competitive. Was it's got competitive. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it has a competitive. I was I was thinking, I almost said also, I was like, Call of Duty Blackout. I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh. He was like, yeah, dude, get this bum out of here. But you said it. You were right there. You were right there. Oh man. You were you were adjacent to it. You were right there. Well, now I gotta come back on to get one right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's just that's just crazy. Uh the fastest person got it. Um, was Square the Bear, and he did uh, Dead by Daylight. I'm, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, it was like wow. nine, nine guesses. It, but it's horror hard. Game. He's like, is it horror? I was like, yeah. He's like, is it multiplayer? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, it's this. I'm like, damn. All right. Too easy. How? If it, if it was Dead, by, oh, Dead by Daylight. Okay, yeah. I was thinking of uh, Last of Us. If you would have said, because Last of Us technically has a multiplayer. Oh, that's so you true. That's play. true. He guessed it. Like, so all he did was guess genres right away. He's played 20 questions before. But I yeah, was man. trying to be very methodical, but like doing that, I was like, because you said between 2015 and 2020, and I'm like, dude, that could be so many freaking games. Uh-huh. I was thinking about it. I was like, because I think Apex came out in like 2017. I'm like, and Fortnite came out around 2016 or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it, that could have been a handful of games. Yeah, Apex was 2019. Um, what was Fortnite? Huh? Fortnite came out before that. Fortnite came out in 2017 as well. Fortnite was first announced in 2011 and released in 2017. PUBG and Fortnite came out the same year. That's crazy. Yeah, but I guess when I when you said BR, I should have been like, oh, that's the first thing I kind of should have gravitated to. But I thought you were trying to trick me. I was thinking too far in the past. I was like, he's going to try and throw me off. I was like, no, but I'm that's trying cool. to. I thought I was like trying to pick games that everyone I think has played. I thought you might have played PUBG at some point, just like a game or two, but I didn't want it, want it to be super, super obvious. Nope. Well, I stand corrected. <laughs> well, thanks for being here, man. I miss you. Um, I'm glad everything's doing well. I know we don't communicate as much as we should, and uh, ever since the the pod that we did a while back, um. You know, went away, dissolved, whatever. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't talk enough, man. I appreciate uh, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, before we jet again, remind people where they can find you, what you're working on, what's what's upcoming, and uh, where they should look as far as social. Yeah, 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 dude. First off, thank you uh, for thinking about me for being on the pod. It uh, honestly means a lot. I know I've been kind of MIA with the content stuff, um, but I I think I I gotta got to step away from the sun a little bit and get back to my duties and start making some videos, man. I got a lot of people out there who support me still and uh, still talk to me. And I'm like, you know what? I got to, I got to go back to pushing some stuff out. So um, if you guys want to keep up with me, uh, you guys can check me out on X uh, at you love Nick Tana. You guys can watch my video game reviews and me talking about anything video game related on YouTube. The last video I, um, or it's at you love Nick Tana on YouTube. The last video I did do, I was talking about the Nintendo GameCube, which I really did enjoy. One of my favorable videos I've done. Make sure you check that out. And um, other than that, man, uh, if you guys want to see me talk about on X about Pokemon, I've been into the Pokemon TCG and stuff like that. So hoping to do something cool with that. Eventually, uh, a lot of thoughts are going into it. uh, So we'll have to wait and see. Um, But yeah, man, just... Look up You Love Nick Tana on all your favorite sites. Go check me out if you do. Um, great. Um, if you support me to this day, great. Uh, but I got to get back into it, man. And uh, Ghost, thanks for having me on, dude. I appreciate it. Seriously. Thank you. Any Anytime. You know that. And we're going to be doing what? Falcon Seahawks in Atlanta? 
in October. Yeah, we're we're like going. That? Yeah, yeah, we're right. going for sure. I I gotta I gotta get with you, and we gotta we gotta get tickets and stuff. I'll, I'm I'm gonna make the flight. We'll make the flight, baby. But uh, we gotta we gotta make it happen. Oh yeah, dude, that would be a blast. That would that that would honestly be one of my favorite things to do. Let's get to it. All right, guys, episode 35, Midnight Release Podcast. You guys can find this on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find me at Ghost Stories Gaming or Ghost Plays Games on all things social, and we will catch you on the next episode. Peace. Peace.